Mr. Investor Lot, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about some very interesting NNDM nano dimension news. Imagine this, I was averaging up and now we got to average down, baby. We were at a 52 week high of $17.89 and now look where we are. We went all the way below seven. And during that dip right here on Friday, I managed to pick up some more shares for a family member. But for myself, I need to average down because my average is like 10 or $11. So in this video, we're going to be discussing some very interesting points. The first one's gonna be jobs at nano dimension. The next, let's talk about the most interesting presentation at the AME Academy, and it was Dr. Massimo Di Vittorio, and he was talking about smart wearables, baby. And we ain't talking Apple Watch. These are something that I've seen that is really innovative. And we're gonna talk about what Kathy Woods thinks about NNDM, baby. We've also got a full year conference call coming up, so we're gonna be looking at all these financials. And remember, Yoav said it was surprising, and he was actually happy. If you're around here my name is miguel and we look for big juicy growth stocks they call me the cowboy because we like to say yeehaw also we now have five patreon members and every single person that is joining my patreon i'm building out a discord group we're going to be covering a lot more juicy stocks and we can do dd together in that discord group so please consider joining if you're one of us baby always remember this is not financial advice and this is for entertainment only baby okay first things first we're waiting for acquisition but while we're waiting let's take a look at all the current open in terms of careers at Nano Dimension. Starting from the bottom to the top, baby. We're talking about a Department of Defense sales manager full-time in the US. There's also a sales development rep in the US and an application engineer. But if we poppity pop this bad boy open, they're looking for someone with a minimum of 10 years sales experience in the defense market. So what they ideally want this person to do is to get more sales from the Department of Defense and to also harbor that relationship. They can push the Nano Dimension dragonfly in there. So we can see here, maintain and generate new contracts within the territory to build a pipeline for sales and i think although they're based in america it's not just for the department of defense in america it's for major defense contractors and defense agencies so the focus of this role is to position and sell nano dimension 3d ame solutions across the defense marketplace much like when we saw in february when x1 got this uh, department of defense contract this was 1.6 million dollars just to build a prototype design for a 3d printing factory inside a shipping container we should be working at building out our own designs we should be working on building building out our own designs and getting projects like this for the Department of Defense. Because when X1 finally gets this together and gets a prototype together for a 3D printing factory in a shipping container, there'll be loads of orders using their machines. Can we also be included in these kinds of contracts? Because we are uniquely positioned in the market for high performance electrical components and devices. As you can see, there is a multitude of jobs cropping around the place. We can see they're building out research and development here with process engineers, senior mechanical engineers. They're even putting out student positions come and get it baby but what's really interesting is they're doing sales development all across the world marketing manager sales development representative in china this is to build out hong kong sales they're also building out their sales in europe as we can see here in stuttgart germany we've got sales development representatives as well and they hired for customer care engineers also so we have the four revenue streams bringing us money we're trying to sell the machine we're trying to sell the ink we're also selling our new nano s services and there's probably lots of contracts for upkeep and maintenance of these machines too so so all we got to see from Yoav is more installations of the machines around the world, more sales, and we're going to see what it looks like in that full year's earnings. So make sure you tune in on Thursday. And before we go into something that was very interesting in the AME Academy, I just want you to hear this quote here. So Kathy Woods was talking about Nano Dimension and she said, originally it used to call itself a 3D printed circuit board company. But now Nano Dimension has broadened the view of itself into a 3D printed technology device company. As you can see here, this is very, very interesting. One of the most important things about Nano Dimension story is their contracts they are winning from defense agencies. We always look for where the defense is putting their money. We know this, the military budgets around the world are unlimited. They're literally always getting cash money. So if we can get a little bit of that slice, we're going to be eating good, baby. Also, can you see here, she said Wood is very impressed with new management at Nano Dimension and points out that the founder is still very involved. So I think they're talking about man like Amrit Draw. And I actually tried to hit this guy up for an interview. I wanted to interview him and Yoav, but I got access denied. Just joking, he didn't even open my message. But I hope one day they do, because I'll be here waiting, baby. So now I'm gonna show you this. We're looking to acquire some companies, right, with like the latest innovative tech that we don't necessarily have, something that is kind of like us, maybe something that also has optical uses. Because we just wanna squeeze into the market, we wanna get a customer base, but we also wanna acquire other companies that have this crazy innovative tech. And now you've seen Arc, they started to build out their position on Nano Dimension, right? Although they have been skimming 
little bits off the top here and there we can see here that they still hold over 6.9 million shares here 5.7 million shares here and 471,000 shares in their Israel portfolio and if you want to track what ARK is buying and selling look in my description box below and click lucid tracking I've got the premium version so I can see all the buys all the sells you can also see the daily aggregate so you can see exactly how much money they're putting in how many shares are changing hands baby as well as the movement in ranking so how much exactly how much weight it holds in each stock in their portfolio so now I live stream the AME Academy you can see me down here hello and one of the companies that stood out was this guy here this guy presented it was Dr Massimo Di Vittorio this guy is based in Italy and he was using the nano dimension dragonfly machine to do some crazy stuff that is going to change so much in the industry and I think this is exactly why nano dimension is now classified by Kathy Wood she said they've changed they're no longer just a PCB company but a 3d printed technology device company so Dr Massimo was saying that he is based on the heel of the boot of Italy as you can see here and, and this is Lesse I think it's called the center of biomolecular nanotechnologies so using some of the technology they had available they were using it to make wearable implantable tattooable and edible technologies so he was talking that we usually do a sickness care model and he's saying we can transition now to a healthcare model then he explains the real problem of this uh, what is called sickness care not really health care you know because uh, you realize that you are bad and then you go uh, to, the, to the doctor and the doctor has a, a limited experience uh, also because it can see tens or hundreds of cases. So Dr. Massimo was saying that when we sense it in our body, we feel sick. That is when we decide to go to the hospital. And when the hospital uh, finds that we are ill, they'll start to do data management, try and figure out what's wrong with us. And then they will give us medication or whatever therapies to try and control our body, bring it back to homeostasis, make sure we're good. But he said, why don't we just flip the model around? And at first we start to look at inside the body. But the idea is that uh, we can uh, uh, produce technologies for uh, emulating our senses but uh, with the idea of looking at inside the body instead of outside. So here as you can see on the left he's talking about physical sensors for muscles, he's talking about optical sensors and he's talking about thermal actuators over here. Two actuators, so electrical actuators for uh, muscle membrane stimulations, uh, uh, thermal actuators to Kill so imagine being able to kill cells just by changing temperature. So this is called hypothermia. It's a type of cancer treatment in the body in which tissue is exposed to higher temperatures. Research has shown that high temperatures can kill and damage cancer cells, usually with minimal injury to normal tissues. So here's an example of what it looks like. A whole body hypothermia treatment takes three to four hours and exposes the patient. You can see here they're putting them across this kind of tin foil layer. And we can see here the aim is to raise the body core temperature to fever range temperatures to destroy destroy those cancer cells. So this is just stating what the technology of the future can be and they already started working on it. So they want to produce body sensors, all of these optical, physical sensors, biochemical sensors in the body. They want to process and monitor that data continuously and then they want to actually control our body. So they want to have all these kind of components and devices to actually help our body to look after itself. And in terms of continuous monitoring over here, just remember the hype around Sense and how amazing that product can be. Sensionics Eversense system, we're talking about continuous glucose monitoring system for diabetics the world's only long-term cgm system so if we're able to monitor our glucose levels and make impacts to diabetics lives just imagine when you can actually do that biochemically we can do it also with optical sensors to also look at heart rate inflammation and down here behind my head it was saying artificial intelligence and big data so massimo was stating that it can actually connect the data in our body and compare it with millions of people around the world using machine learning and artificial intelligence and all of these different technologies can turn meaningless data into clusterizing millions of data points to understanding problems within our body. There are many different uses for this. So here he's going to present to us exactly what his company does and it's very very interesting. So uh, today I'm going to show you what we um, do in this, uh, in, this, in this respect, how we develop our uh, technologies and uh, I will focus on a number of uh, uh, technologies, piezoelectric uh, technologies for uh, uh, skin electronics, uh, wearable uh, also some probes, uh, electrochemical biosensors, uh, or integrated and flexible antennas to be uh, put on the skin, and finally on, uh, on uh, brain probes. And then he said he's going to show how awesome Nano Dimensions 3D printing technology is for this kind of innovative technology. I'm show for this technology how 
Ah, also, uh, 3D multi-material painting uh, the phenomenon the dimension machine is, is helping us uh, to, to produce uh, technology that um, otherwise so with nano dimensions help they've been able to do these piezo electric technologies for skin electronics we're talking about smart patches we're talking about electronic tattoos you can also sense motions and produce ultrasonic vibrations and forces on the skin so this is what they look like there's an electronic tattoo you can see here there's the smart patches they're very small very thin and flexible and this guy massimo said that it has ultra low energy consumption and it can harness the mechanical energy of our bodies in order to power themselves how how crazy is that so you can see here body energy harvester it's a closed loop and it can power itself by using our mechanical energy this means that they are ultra low consumption but at the same time they can harvest and mechanical energy produced in our body. So this is a very useful technology to actually have sensors to data manage and then control the body. So what you want to do ideally is collect the data, monitor, control the body, and then the uses include sports performance, wellness, and also checking up maintenance and continuous monitoring of our health status. So we've seen a lot of fantastic technologies coming out using silicon for smart microsystems. So we're talking about smartphones, smart electronic wearables, and that now because of the pandemic, this guy Massimo is saying that they are producing a next generation body sensor that you won't even be able to be aware of having it on your body so this apple watch was the first example of us uh, transitioning over and actually using smart wearable devices so these sensors can sense any blockages in the artery forming this could be a massive innovative sensor for stroke for heart attack for atherosclerosis for inflammations inside your arteries they can measure the pressure within the arteries and you can tell when the artery is getting clogged so this is not just for a one-off but this is for continuous monitoring over time they also do blood weight monitoring so this is very important for people with cardiovascular problems this kind of technology could do a world of wonders for people all across the world in monitoring their health care when we're in the hospital i found it particularly difficult for patients who are wired up and confused and agitated to actually check their vital signs so it's extremely difficult to do that when somebody has dementia and they're seeing all these wires coming out of them but with this new technology here you won't even feel it on your skin it's so flexible and wearable it's tattooable you also don't need a counter pressure in order for it to stay on the skin. What you can see is here that you don't need to apply a counter pressure. So all the blood pressure tools currently need to apply a counter pressure to be able to measure signal like this. Let's take a look over here. So we can still measure the signal and it's highly accurate. So no need for the counter pressure, highly accurate and can be applied alongside ECG. It can even also work with uh, dysphagia so it can help you monitor patients that are unable to swallow or have their swallow reflex compromised. Uh, so this can be applied uh, in combination of uh, ECG. And uh, we are um, starting these days uh, clinical trials for uh, measuring uh, the swallowing forces. So people with swallowing problems can swallow food the wrong way, it can choke or block their airway. And this kind of technology also disrupts the traditional way of inserting a probe into your throat, which can actually affect the way you swallow anyway. And they said Nano Dimension Dragonfly tools made this all possible because before they had this, they had so many problems. All the other techniques didn't work for them. Because uh, before buying uh, the, the, the nano dimension tools, uh, we we tried a different way of uh, you know producing a reliable contacts. So imagine being able to also have an antenna on it, and you could just flick this on without a wire, and it transmits the data to your phone or to the provider of your healthcare. This could work wonders in hospital alone, but imagine for community nursing for all of the community healthcare as well. Sometimes we used to go into the community and we just find people dead in their homes. We just find dead bodies because there was no one there for them because a lot of the older generation sometimes they live by themselves because everyone moves on with their life some people don't manage to see their grandparents or their fathers and mothers so often in the community we would find these people um you know they would fall over and they wouldn't be able to get up they wouldn't be able to reach a phone and some of them would die in their houses so imagine if we could monitor the stress levels we could monitor the blood pressure and we could physically see something going wrong it could actually flag up on the system and we could just roll up to the house and see what's up with them this next thing as well reminded me of Neuralink and this was very interesting they're talking about optical fiber probes if nndm acquires this company they will also have access to this so does this have like neuralink like capabilities does it read brain activity apparently here on this slide it says brain activity readout and control it does let me now 
talk about uh, they implanted the uh, called uh, the colonies. We, uh, as I said, uh, work uh, on probes uh, for the brain. These are very sharp probes. These are actually optical fibers that are nanostructured and uh, transformed through our um, technological product calls to be able not only uh, to deliver light and light delivery in, in optogenetics, which is a new field of, uh, of science. So he goes on to talk about control of brain functions and how it can deliver light acoustics, temperature, and it can have a readout of brain activity, including electrical, optical, and chemical. This could do wonders for so many comorbidities. Imagine being able to monitor the brain for anything that changes. Dopamine, serotonin, all of that shebang. Also these electrical probes. So imagine what these probes can do. Imagine all the people with spinal injuries around the world. And with the spinal injury, you know, they've got their cord. Depending on where the damage is within the body, usually affects how much function someone has. So as we can see here, it says a cervical vertebrae injury injury is the most severe of all spinal cord injuries because the higher up of the spine an injury occurs the more damage that is caused to the central nervous system so as your brain is sending down the electrical information telling you what to do with your body breaks at certain points we can see here c3 level break will have limited mobility in both their flexion and extension a c4 vertebra break here will show that nerves that run up the diaphragm which help us breathe by contracting and pulling air into the lungs will be affected and even here at c5 vertebrae it can affect your vocal cords it can affect your bi biceps and your deltoid muscles in the upper arms. So imagine if they're able to put on these little patches, these smart sensors, and if the sensors are able to transmit electrical signals, imagine if you're reading your brain activity, you can see where the break point is, you put it there, all of a sudden you send an electrical impulse to move your legs and this smart wearable device that you attach on, imagine it can stimulate the signal to go down to the rest of your body. This could help a lot of people. This is my kind of understanding and speculation surrounding what they can do with body control in the future they're hoping for. If they are able to stimulate muscle groups and brain stimulation could they perhaps help these people with spinal injuries it will be a massive lucrative market so the future of their technology they said that the future directions are enabled by the dragonfly printer and they wouldn't be able to print these kinds of electrical devices and components if not for the dragonfly so imagine the internet of things continuous health monitoring imagine everything interconnected this kind of technology here is super innovative for healthcare but also for the sports industry and much much more you can see here they have artificial artificial hair cells for flow sensing. So these ultra compact flow sensors mimic the sensors around fishes whenever there is motion around their sides in the water. It is fantastic senses. So we mimicked um, these uh, sensors and produced uh, ultra compact uh, self-rolled cantilevers. Lastly, at the end of the stream, there was a massive Q&A. They just wanted to answer uh, technological questions. They didn't really answer much about our questions uh, as retail investors. So they were speaking about 3D printing. They were speaking about the end user and how this can change the way we manufacture. They also spoke about mass manufacturing, new technologies, soldering, reflow. And they also talked about producing new materials in 18 to 24 months time. They also said that they were planning to move around with graphene. That's something that they were looking at, but it's very difficult to use. Graphene can help because it has good thermal properties good conductivity in chip packaging but it's very complex to work with if you'd like to watch this just click up above i'm going to leave a little card up here so you can click and watch the full stream it's about six and a half hours but in terms of the future of nano dimension i'm so curious as to what they're going to buy because we were all speculating that some of the companies there in that presentation for the ame academy may be doing a little bit of a show and tell to present or maybe nano dimension is just slowly introducing to us some people that they think might be lucrative for them to acquire maybe they've already acquired them but in terms of the future i believe just for me this is not financial advice i'm going to be super patient with nano dimension now that the stock price has fallen below my average as well i'm going to be building out strong positions with nano dimension as i get my cash flow coming in and this is not financial advice entertainment only price prediction i put 100 on the thumbnail for a reason i believe this company is super undervalued and what they can do for not only the pcb industry but many others is crazy innovative and i think in five Five years time we'll be so lucky to have bought nano dimension at this price now remember a lot can change it's all about management it's all about product it's all about managing finances and acquiring the right people so there's a long way to go baby but i'm in this for the long run if you want to shoot me some dd that you've done and you want to talk about stocks that we can present together and build up a community i'm opening up the discord group soon so please join the patreon and together we will look at some amazing growth stocks but if you're unable to join my channel memberships or you're unable to join my patreon just so you hit like and click 
click and subscribe on this video means the world to me. I love all the support you've given me so far. Thank you so much, everybody, for the donations. I'm going to use them to get into events for different companies around the world that we're interested in. I love you. Thank you very much for watching. Mr. Invest a lot. Over and out, baby.